Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. This is going to be a getting started and getting some good habits while getting started with using Unreal Engine 4. And for those who've never really used the program before, then I want to just kind of showcase a few things that will get you started in the right way. You want to make sure that you've got the engine actually installed into the Epic Launcher. Then once you do, you just click on Library, make sure you see it right there. And then you're not going to have all these projects. These are uh, some of the many that I've got going on. You can just click on Launch Engine. And for this, we're going to start off, we're going to do some vehicle stuff. Um, just because it's a little bit different. We're always doing third person or first person or that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be getting back to the vehicle stuff. So you're just going to click on Launch the Engine. For the first time because you don't have any projects already created and it's going to initialize and load and do its thing and then once it loads up then we can actually go ahead and tell it what we want to create and this is going to be our first blank starter project in vehicle mode but let's go ahead and get started and get organized now I'm not gonna load anything else into this project and the reason for that is I'm going to go ahead and select a new project and I'm going to start off with blank. Uh, desktop or console, maximum quality, no starter content, and also going to make sure that we have a good location. The My Documents location is good a good place for it. Um, we're going to go ahead and call this um, car underscore tutorial call it whatever you like but I'm gonna go ahead and just say create it blank you have all these templates that's lovely but let's go ahead and create it as blank desktop and console maximum quality no starter content you can just click on it and just select no starter content give it a name and then click create project it will do its thing and it will create Let's see. Now, it's finishing doing its thing here. Now, we have nothing here. We click on this little tab right here, and this is going to open up to where we have our left and our right for our content explorer. And see, in content, we have nothing. Since we are going to try to do this as a car template, the first thing I want to do is you know you don't have to do this I get rid of that just for the sake of it it's good to have in a level but for experimenting and screwing around I'm not going to have it in there so I'm also going to go ahead and delete this this is the floor you look in your your panel over here I don't need that so I'm going to get rid of it the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to left click to select the untitled we know that this is our map right here but I want to go ahead and create a folder and we're going to right click on content and we want to create a new folder and that new folder is going to be called maps now if we click on our content we can see that it'll show up over here we're going to want to create some plenty of new folders here let's go ahead and call the next one characters and let's create another one called assets now we don't need these just yet but we're going to so the next thing we want to do is we want to create some basic terrain if we're going to do a car then that first little floor section isn't really much to drive on so we need a world to actually drive on so the next thing I'm going to do is click on the landscape and it's going to generate this grid pattern now I don't want to use the whole thing so let's actually scale this to number of components let's drop this down to four and then hit tab key hit four so now it's four tiles by four tiles so if we scroll out we can see that it's four this way and four this way this will be good enough to get tested and get testing with so let's go ahead and hit create now there's not going to be any textures on the terrain that's fine 
and I'm going to click back on this which is our objects tab and you can see the lighting needs to be rebuilt 16 well it's 4 by 4 so that's 16 so for right now go ahead and hit build and let it do its thing it's only going to take a couple seconds because we don't really have anything on here but you're fine um, Grizzeg um, yeah, just um, let it do its thing it's actually going to build the map and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save it so that we can actually have it saved to our maps folder so it's just about done the speed of which it takes to do lighting builds is based on your CPU and your GPU so that's done we're going to go ahead and hit save all and save selected double click on your maps folder and we're going to call this our test map so that's it now if we were to click on here to play nothing really is going to happen because we don't have a character yet so I'm going to click on on left click anywhere on this ground and I'm actually going to change the Z value here to zero that's going to lower the world to zero that's my preference of how I like to work on things so let's go ahead and select our test map and now we're going to right click on it create folder and map stuff just give it a name and I'm going to grab everything here and left click then shift left click and then left click and drag to the map stuff and there you go now everything is in a neat folder where it's going to be easier for us to uh, to find things now since we want a car then let's go ahead and click on this big green button over here add new now keep in mind if you don't have this box right here that's not a big deal um, I have mine turned on you can actually go to window and turn off that I don't need that 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 box and level details I don't need that that was for something else so I've got that turned off so this is probably what yours looks like um, so I want to also go into I'm sorry the add new come all the way to the very top add feature or content pack and let's go ahead and, and select a vehicle template and add to project and it's just that easy you actually close that one down and what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and add a vehicle to this map so what we have to do is go to our world settings now if you don't have the world settings tab right here you can just come to your windows tab and you want to make sure that you have world settings checked right there let's put a check next to that and it'll ensure that you have that then we want to come over here to game mode and game mode override and we want vehicle game mode now if we look we can expand this um, selected game mode tab here so default pawn is going to be sedan so that's going to be our car that we're going to drive um, yeah now if we just hit play um, now see I have a mouse cursor bug that's only been doing this ever since 419 if you have this then all you have to do is left click somewhere on the map now you can use your WASD keys and you can see that you have um, your speed listed in kilometers per hour and your current gear that you're in doesn't really represent well it's set up as an automatic transmission now if you hit the uh, tab key you can actually go to an interior view and now you can see your speed and gear there um, not the best handling car in the world but it's just a starter system to get us going hit tab again go back to the exterior view and that's just a camera switch now one thing you do notice that the wheels turn whenever you turn and you can actually see the well if you could see somebody else playing you would see the the wheels are actually spinning which is a good thing those are animations and it's just as simple to go ahead and just jump right in and create that but let's actually take a look at the files and you notice that it was there was no sound to it I'm going to show you a little cheaty little shortcut for adding sound to your vehicle so if you expand your vehicle BP and then go to sedan here is your sedan right here this is your actual car that you're driving we're not going to edit this one but we're going to make a copy of it and make some changes you'll see that it comes up to handle mouse camera movement and this is what's called a blueprint style of architecture now blueprints are 
probably the easiest way to get started in, in working with um, creating a game. So what I want to do is I want to make a copy of this and we want to go to our characters folder and make a couple folders. First one we want to do is blueprints. Okay. And we're going to do some more later with that. But let's start off with the blueprints folder. And what I want to do is go to the sedan folder, left click, drag and drop into the blueprints folder here for our characters. And on copy here. And I'm going to left click on it and select it, hit the F2 key. And I'm going to give my car a new name. My car, whatever. You call it whatever you like. Then you can hit enter or double click on it and bring it up. Now we have, if you click on viewport, you can actually see the car. You can right click and then move your mouse around to pan around. Um, right click and then WASD will, uh, while you're holding down the, the right mouse button, to pan around. And as you can imagine, that's your, your camera for the interior. And this camera right here is your exterior camera. You can make adjustments to it if you like, um, but yeah, the default setup is not too bad. So what if we decided we don't want this blue color? That blue looks kind of eh, whatever. So I'm going to close this tab right here. And now we want to go to our character folder and we want to create another folder here called materials. And what I'm going to do is go to my folders. And you see there's, there's no materials here. So I want to open up the vehicle version. You got mesh. And then inside the, the mesh folder, there's really no mesh. <laughs> there's one. It has nothing to do with the car whatsoever. It is the rough terrain mesh. So I'm going to scroll around. I'm going to find where my player start is, which is this little doohickey right here. Looks like a game controller with a flag. That's your player start. I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag this into the map. And just that easy, I've dragged that, that, that mesh in here. So we have something to drive over. Now, You've got your your tabs here. This one right here, when you see with the uh, the squares on on the, the piece, and I'm, again I'm holding down the right mouse button using WASD to kind of move around the the map. This one right here is your scale tool. So if you were to to mouse over to where all of it turns yellow, left click and then move your mouse left or right, then it will change the scale of it. You can also click on your details panel and change the scale to 0.5 and hit tab key point eight and then two whatever you or you can put it back to one one or you can just hit the delete key while you have that particular one selected and delete it I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there and then I'm gonna select this tool right here which is the rotate tool and I can actually click on this little bar right here and it's kind of self-explanatory rotate it 90 degrees and then we have this tool right here which is used for you can grab one leg at a time and move it around left to right up and down I'm gonna leave it just below the surface of the map so that we have a smooth transition going on to it and there you go so now we got at least something we can drive over. Um, I'll actually scale it down to 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5. Make it even smaller. Just for the heck of it. And I'm going to go ahead and position it right in front of where our character starts. So we can just drive right over it. So if you guys got questions along the way, just jump right there in chat and, and let me know. We actually want to look at the car. So we we'll click on the textures. Mm, I'm not going to use that. Click on the sedan folder and materials. And here we have our materials. This is for the sedan. Now, what I want to do is come over here to my. I want to drag a copy of it into our materials folder. Left click, drag, drop, and copy here. And I'm going to hit F2. My car underscore. Actually, let's put in the M underscore then my car. The M underscore tells me that whenever I look at it, that this is actually going to be a material. So and that might come in handy for, for later use. But I'm going to double click on it and go into it. 
Now you can see it, it has a, a metallic and a roughness added to it, but you see your base color. I want to actually change that base color, so I'm going to select that and then my default value, and then I want to change it to yellow. Now a nice little thing you can do as well is um, you can left click on this new color, drag it over here and drag it on top of this bar, and now you can save that color and go back to it whenever you want. Uh, see, Senor Eagle is in Discord. So we hit OK, and then what we want to do is click Save. That's going to save it and apply it at the same time. Now, what I want to do is I want to apply that to my car. So as soon as this gets done doing its save thing, just let it run its course. And once you see that stuff go away, then you can go ahead and close that tab. Now, if I go in here to hit Play, then... I'm still on the blue skin. I don't like that blue skin. There we go. We can just drive over our obstacle. Space bar is for your uh, your handbrake. So I want to use that new new material. Go to my blueprints folder. First off, we're not even using my car. So you want to go to world settings, and underneath here where you see default pawn class, you're gonna select my car, and now. When we go in, we're going to play with my car. I'm going to double click on my car. And I want to click on the viewport, right click, and use your WASD to kind of pan around a little bit. And now you've got mesh. You select your mesh, and now you see you have all these meshes to work with. Well, the element 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, we don't know what any of these actually do. Well, I do, but if you look, this right here says M underscore vehicle sedan. We can actually take this one, left click on the here, and select my car, and now we can change it over to yellow. So I want to hit compile and save, and then I can close this. Now when I hit play, you can see we're in my car. Alrighty then. So the next thing I want to do is now whenever I hit the Hmm. I'm hitting to go reverse, and I don't have any reverse lights. I don't have any tail lights. It'd be kind of nice to add some tail lights and some sound to our car. So first off, let's cheat a little bit, and well, I'm going to select the arrow next to my build and select build lighting only. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add the sound in, and this is going to be a really easy thing to do because we're kind of stealing from another um, package here. Now, if we don't want to use our test map, let's actually, I'm going to cancel the autosave. I'm not a fan of autosave. I save frequently enough as it is. Um, so, I don't need something to automatically save things that I don't care about. So, I'm going to hit edit and editor preferences. And I'm going to type in up here in a search block autosave. And I'm going to uncheck that box. Now you can kiss my butt. I don't want you anymore. So let's go ahead and save all so we can save our map. And what happened is whenever we added this vehicle template in here, it actually gave us a map. And if we go to the maps folder in the vehicle blueprint folder, we can double click on this vehicle example map. And now we have it. Now if we were to go on, on this one and actually play here, hit play, we're not actually using it because there is a player start here with a vehicle already in it. So I'm going to select that one and I'm going to get to hit the delete key and get rid of it. And now whenever I hit play, I can spawn in and then you see I still have this stupid mouse cursor bug. If you have that problem, well, save all because I want to save the map without that on there. Here's a quick cheat on how to get rid of that is you go to blueprints up here and go to open level blueprint and in here, this is your first sample of what you're going to do with a blueprint. So at the very beginning when we load this map, we want it to do something in particular every time we load this map. So I'm going to do this here. Not the best place to do it. I'll show you another way of doing it as well. But if you wanted to do it only on this map, then what you want to do is you want it to have an event. But you want it to do it when you begin to play. So event begin play 
a lot of this is self-explanatory. The more you experiment, the easier it's going to become. Now you want to left click on this executable tab, drag off from there, and I want to set input to game only. So I'm setting my input mode to game only. Now it's asking for the player controller. So we drag off from that blue thing and you say get player controller. And there you go. So you're going to get your player controller reference here, but we want to get rid of the mouse cursor. We want to make sure we're in game mode. So I'm going to come off of my player controller and drag off a little bit and then start typing in to set show or show mouse cursor. Set show mouse cursor. Now I want to connect this tab to this tab and bring it up here, make it neat and organized. And I'm going to leave this unchecked. If you want to show the mouse cursor, you would check that box. But we don't want it, so we're going to leave it unchecked. So we're going to compile and save and then close this tab. So now when we go into it, it automatically gets rid of that mouse cursor and I don't have that bug anymore. Now in your vehicle test map, you've got some little things you can run over or actually supposed to drive in a slalom, try to get around them and, and whatnot. But this is a nice little test track, so a little, a little bit easier to work with. So the other way to do it is actually go into the vehicle blueprint and edit it that way. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to minimize some of these folders we don't need open right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Add New, Add Feature Content Pack, and Vehicle Advanced. I'm going to add that in here. Now we're not really going to be working with this particular setup. It's already in. So why do we need it? So if we look inside of the uh, the folders that come with it, in the blueprints, uh, we're looking for the vehicle blueprint. Double click, go into that one, and there's something in here called engine sound. So I'm going to drag this down and then drag it back up here to make sure that it's on my top bar. So now I can click between tabs. If we go into the blueprint for our car, see we got my car is here, and we don't have that sound in there. So we want this engine sound thing to show up in here. So what I want to do is make sure that I have my car selected, add component, and it's going to be an audio component. And we're going to call this engine sound. Now, if we click back on our vehicle blueprint, if we look, we've got our engine sound selected here. It's using the sound of engine loop Q. So let's actually do the same thing. So we're going to click on sound, engine loop Q, compile and save. Now that's not all we need to do here. We need to actually find out um, how they're doing it. So if you use your mouse wheel to scroll out on the advanced vehicle blueprint, we want to look for uh, right here, audio. Scroll out and you can see vehicle movement, get forward speed, we won't really go into what all these things do just yet. We can see that it's off of event tick and it's got a sequence node. So we can do the same thing. We don't necessarily need the... well we're gonna have to because we already have an event tick here. So I'm gonna grab this and then you see there's a white line already connecting it to set in reverse gear. We're not going to change that, but we are going to drag from here and we're going to start typing in sequence. And you can see that there's a sequence node already selected right there. Sequence node is just a way of splitting off. We're going to do this, but also at the same time we want to do this. So what I can do is come in here now and left click and drag box around this, control C to copy it. Go back to my car, control V to paste it in, and we can move it around by grabbing this piece right here. And now we just want to connect then one to this right here, and that's going to give us vehicle sound. Compile and save. Oh no, engine sound doesn't exist. Ah, uh, what are we going to do? Well, um, a vehicle blueprint, it's all one word. And here we have it as two words. Well, um, we can either do it this way and rename it, take the space out, and then compile and save, but that didn't fix the problem. 
I don't like it with the space not in between. So I'm going to put the space back in there. So how can we fix this? We don't have that that parameter there. Well, the easy way to do it is right click on it and select create variable engine sound and then we can hit compile and save and that'll fix that. It's a temporary fix and it gets it there. So if we look at this one right here, there was no nothing right in here, but if we open these, huh, no. Hmm. No. No and components. Well there it is. So this is gonna be good enough to get us rolling. So we know we have our engine sounds. No problem. It's gonna gonna play. Now, attenuation settings, we won't get into this all that much for right now, um, because that the sound cue is going to take care of all that for us. We're going to close these, close these down, and now if we hit play, hey, we got an engine idle. Now, if we're cranking up the RPMs, it's not changing. So, why not? Well, we got an error. Wow, a lot of errors. So, set float parameter. Well, if we go in here, in name RPM, why do we have a problem? Our engine sound here is not going to work. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to delete that and I'm going to left click on the engine sound and drag that into it and then left click and drag it into it. So now it's actually using the correct engine sound, compile and save. I'm not going to close that just yet, and we're going to do a few more things. Hit play. Now, you see as we're accelerating, the engine sounds actually change. But we still want some brake lights, and we still want to, well, if we want reverse lights, that's something we could do as well. But you see, no more errors. Everything is good. So what I want to do is I want to create some way of, of having brake lights. So if we look at our model, and again, I'm right-clicking and then panning around. We have brake lights here. There's a bunch of different ways we can do this. You can see that um, there is a material already applied to the model for the brake lights. We could technically do some creative work with that but let's start simple and you can always work from there so what I want to do is I have my mesh selected I want to add component and we're going to create a point light now we want to move that point light so that it's in, in the correct place and then let's drag it up you can see it's a bright white light we're going to fix that too drag it over here and we want to get it close to the vehicle can't really put it behind there because it won't show up at all but we want it close and if you can't get it as close as you want because it's it's snapping what I mean by snapping is it's going to snap at increments here you can change the the increment amount or you can click on this right here turn that off and it'll disable snapping but that actually looks good for me. But now we want to change the light color. And let's change it to bright red. And I'm going to save that red because I'm going to use that red quite a bit later on. So you click OK. And now you actually have red. So it's going to glow red. And we want to make a copy of it. So with that selected, we want to Control C and then Control V. And then left click and drag that one over a little bit. So now we have two of them point light and point light 2. If we hit compile and save, what's going to happen is our vehicle, those lights are going to be on all the time. So, let's just quickly set it up to where it only works whenever we are rolled over and stupid. Alright, so, no, we want to make it to where it only, um, brake lights only come on whenever you're slowing down or hitting the, the correct key. And, you know, when we hit the S key is what actually is slowing us down or setting us to reverse. So we want to click on our event graph and off of this, our event tick, because we want to constantly be checking 
man, this stuff is growing all the way over here. You know, we could work off of that at the end of it, or we can actually add another pin here. So let's actually work from the end. So we scroll, keep seeing all these white lines. They're, they're moving more and more and more to getting all the way to here. So I'm just going to drag off of here, and I'm going to create a new function off of that event tick. But let's also do something different. Let's create a custom event. So I'm going to right click and custom. So add custom event. I'm going to call this break lights. So with that custom event, so I'm going to drag it somewhere, get it nice and neat. And what we want it to do is we want to turn these lights on and off. So first off, let's go ahead and select the point light and you see that it's visible. There's nothing else in here that I can adjust. So let's uncheck visible here. Do the same thing with point light one. Uncheck visible. So if we compile and save and go back into the map and play, now you can see that they're not visible. We want to turn the visibility on and off based on whether we're pressing the key or not. So instead of actually doing it this way, but let's go ahead and delete that one. And we want to right click and you type in keyboard and you can see if you scroll up, you see all these different things here. We want the S key. So now the S key is going to trigger our event. When we press it, it's going to do one thing. When we let go of it, it's going to do another thing. So left click on here and we can drag off, but let's actually go ahead and drag in our point light and drag in our point light one. Let's drag it in, left click, drag and drop right into the map. So now what I want to do is left click from point light and I want to let go and do set visibility so I can turn visibility on or on and off. So connect that up and drag it over here because we're going to have another one. We want to drag this one into the same box. So when we press the key, it's going to set the visibility to on. Now when we unpress it, we want to set visibility to off. So I want to connect released to right here. And I want to make sure I do both lights at the same time are going in both directions there. So now when we hit the S key, it's going to turn the lights on. When I let go of the key, it's going to turn them off. So let's try that. Compile and save. Go in here. And there you go. Now, start accelerating. Everything's good. Oh, we need to hit the brakes. Oop. There we go. So every time we hit the S key now, it's going to cause them to come on. It's cheap, easy trick. It works. So, any questions on things so far? Um, map creation stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I've already got out there for map creation. Um, we're not actually going to use this map here. And now, also the map that came with the the advanced one as well. If we want to go into that one, we can go to the vehicle advanced example map. Double click on it, bring it up, save select, yeah, sure, why not? Actually, have a stunt track. Now, we need to make sure that we have our game mode selected. So, select this. Yep, get ready to end the video here in just a second anyway. But, um, we want to put it in vehicle game mode. Use my car and hit play. However, it's not going to use it because this car is still on the map. So, let's go ahead and delete that one. And now we hit play. We're in our car. Since there is no player start, it's going to start wherever. To me, this is a little bit nicer uh, map to actually play around with. Um, vehicles performance still, well, sucks. As you can see. Just not enough acceleration. The tires aren't in the right place, so you're going to get stuck. Yeah, it's kind of screwy. But... I want to showcase one thing really quickly. I want to go ahead and grab a player start, left click and drag that into the map and let go. And now we have a player start. 
Well, we have player starts all over the map, it seems. There's one here, and there's one over here, there's one over there. So every time you hit play and hit escape to, to quit playing, um, you notice I get the mouse cursor thing as well. So if we want to do that, um, so no matter what map we go into, we don't have that bug, then we can find a blank space here and event begin play. Well, since there's already is one in here, then we want to look and let's go ahead and add it on really quickly. Um, set input to game mode only. And we want to get the player controller, get player controller. And then from the player controller, set show mouse cursor, connect it up, and that'll fix it once and for all. You want to make sure of that just in case you were doing something in another menu. You want to make sure that you're still there. And why it chose to, to ignore me, I don't know. So it didn't work. So I'm going to delete that and actually move it in off of event begin play. I'm going to put a sequence node. And again, the sequence node is just a splitter to let me add more functionality in other places. Then we want to set input to game mode only. And get player controller. And set show mouse cursor, connect it up, and that should be good to go. So if we hit compile and save and play. No more mouse cursor. Now, if you want to start experimenting with tweaking the car and making it have a little bit more performance, well, if you come into my car, if you scroll through all your stuff you have up here, you've got vehicle movement. Now, this is where you guys are going to experiment and play around with it and either fix it or screw it up, either one. You've got your mechanical setup, and you have your curve here, your torque curve. You can actually left-click and drag this little dot around and adjust your torque curve. I'm going to move it back. Now you can actually have it set to where you can add another point to it and have it variable torque curve. So as it's going through the RPM range, it's going to adjust how much torque it has at those different ranges. If you go to the engine setup, your maximum RPM, if you change that to 6,000, it's going to every, the higher you put this, the faster your vehicle is going to end up going to a certain extent. Um, damping rate is good for trying to control how well your throttle works. Your differential setup. We're already set up as a limited slip four-wheel drive, but we can set it up as a limited slip front drive or limited slip rear, open differential four-wheel drive. My Jeep guys, you'll know what that is. Um, open front drive and open rear drive. I'm going to leave it as limited slip four-wheel drive for now. But then you can set your bias, your front split. Um, if you don't know what your bias is, you're not a true car guy. So, you know, you can screw around with that. You got your transmission set up, which is going to give you, okay, it's an automatic transmission. This is my gear selector. And I want my gear ratio to be this. Your down ratio, up ratio. Um, so you can adjust your gear setup, your clutch strength, things like that is all done from right inside here your steering setup yeah this is where it's kind of funky is there's no real rhyme or reason of why each thing is the way it is but again something to, to kind of screw around with to see if you can adjust your steering um, I really wasn't more about the acumen yet it's your wheel setup that's your actual tires so if you open this up you'll have to do this equally for all four tires. Your additional offsets. This is how going to change your positioning for your tires and whether or not it has steering or not. Um, if you disable steering, then this tire will not turn. If um, if you look, 0 and 1 are your front two tires, 2 and 3 are your rear two tires. 
So, reverse as brake is something that's important to know. So if you disable steering, it's not really going to matter visually right now because the animation system is set up for the front tires only to turn. But if you were to configure your animations, you could actually change it around to where you can make four-wheel steering visible. Um, yeah. Experiment. Open things up. Look around. Figure out what's what. I'm going to hit compile and save. I'm going to close that tab. I'm going to hit play again. And I've increased my torque curve a little bit and my top speed. So play around with it. See what you can come up with. And let me know how your vehicles turn out from playing around with it this way. Um, later on, we can help cover a way of doing a reset so if you do roll over there's a we can set up a key to actually fix the orientation of our vehicle so that you can actually fix the rotation and, and un, unflip your car so to speak and yes if you want to go off-road you can go off-road the other vehicle that was included in the advanced vehicle template has much better suspension setup and I just so if you go into default pawn class of my car, come over here if you want to look at it and see how it drives. You've got vehicle blueprint. Select that, hit play, and now you're in that vehicle. And it is absolutely terrible. So escape, play again. The suspension and everything is okay. You got good steering. But, you know, the actual performance of the vehicle leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, as you can see. So, something to exp experiment with, and I hit F1 key and it turned on wireframe. I did not intend to do that. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can hit that will mess with your views. Let's hit escape and go back over here. Hit play again. So that gets me back into uh, a driving mode. Now, if you try changing the model on this one, it's a whole different ball game because yeah, the vehicle itself is not just um, that. Uh, I'm going to hit save all so I can save this map to have no default vehicle on it. Um, looking at the vehicle blueprints and the, the files for it, you've got a bunch of different folders here and files. And the more you screw with things, the more chance you, you have to, well, screw them up. But you scroll through until you find the skeleton for it vehicle advance let's actually look at the vehicle advance folder um, the vehicle folder and inside the vehicle folder vehicle skeleton and if you open up that okay you may not have this retarget manager up but if you look at the skeleton tree holy crap there's a lot of stuff on the skeleton same thing right click and then you can use your WASD to pan around and move around you've got your kingpins you've got your upper and lower control arms you've got um, you can manually click on stuff and try to get them to, to show up but you can click on the name over here upper shock arms uh, yeah there's a lot of crap all in here uh, whereas if you look at the basic vehicle vehicle mesh even though you would think that that would be in there but it's not sedan skeleton you open up that one and this is going to be the easy one to work with you have the vehicle base you have your four tires and that's it and your skeletal mesh I mean that's it it's, this is the easy one to work with so experiment if the worst case scenario you screw things up and you know worst case scenario you can just delete stuff and reinstall it so if I don't if I screwed up my my vehicle advanced first thing I want to do is not be in that map so I'm going to go to the test map and uh, man I really screwed up on my my advanced vehicle so I can actually left click on the vehicle advanced BP and control left click on vehicle advanced I just really screwed them up I, I destroyed all of it 
so I can just hit the delete key and delete and it'll get rid of it and I can just you know re-import it back in here and yeah screw it forced delete oh no that just killed our sound files so there's where um, now we don't have the the sound files for our vehicle because we deleted things that's where proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance so let's go back to our assets folder and we're gonna fix this problem now if we go to our assets folder we want to create right click create a new folder called audio and I'm gonna right click again new folder engine you can't put a space in there so engine sounds now what I want to do is yeah it I said delete but it's not in here it's still here it did not get rid of that damn folder welcome to Unreal Engine 4 so I'm gonna go back to add new add feature content advanced a vehicle advanced add that back into the project again it's already in just that quick now what I want to do is go to the sound folder and it's not going to show up because now I have I've trying to tell it to delete it's killed it but it's there we, we told it to come back so just hit escape don't save who cares and go back into your project again and we call this our uh, what do we call this car tutorial just double click on it go back directly into the project and it should be okay after that it's just a known bug with Unreal Engine that it, it does not actually delete the folder then if you try to re-import it back in again like well, it, it's whatever it, it can't figure it out minor bug but just close it reopen it see it's back again vehicle advanced folder is back looking here let's go ahead and and left click here and then shift left click on the last one so we have them all selected open our asset folder back up and I am going to left click and drag drop on my engine sound folder and copy here now I'm not going to delete the um, vehicle advanced stuff just yet because what I would like to do is actually go back in here and you have these arena meshes I like to be able to use those so I'm going to keep those and the materials that go with it the physics the sounds we already copied over textures we don't need you know experiment with things play with things um, the more you play around with things the faster you're gonna learn there's a lot of stuff that I learned from watching videos and well first off it's trying to go directly into another map that we don't have so I'm gonna tell it to go to the default test map make this my standard map so what I want to do is go to edit project settings sorry I'm all over the place on this video but Ugh. we go to maps and modes we don't want template default so the editor startup map let's tell it to use the test map game default map test map so now we can just hit that and close and now every time we open up this project it's going to go to this map right here so if we hit play now we're in this mode we've got this vehicle as our default what if we don't want this one to be our default we want my car and I'm getting this under a default pawn class we want this to be the default pawn so we can experiment, play around with the settings on the car, and yeah. So go back to our edit and project settings. Since you guys aren't asking questions, I'm just kind of jumping all around here. So um, maps and modes again. And in here, game mode base, we want to change that to vehicle game mode. Select here and make sure everything is correct, and we're good to go. So now we we'll first load it up this is what we got this map this car so experiment with the settings and 
in more advanced videos, what you want to do is try to create a system to where you can increase the performance of the car based on different conditions. So if you add a new turbo or whatever, then you want to increase the performance. That's getting more advanced into it, but this will get you started with getting into a vehicle and driving it around a map. Um, experiment with the map. Like I said, if you go through some of my other videos, you'll see that I've got videos on doing just about everything. So on the sculpt tool, you can left click and spawn things in. Or if you want to come over here and change your sculpt to smooth, you can smooth it out. You can change your tool size. Um, you can use flatten tool and make flat sections based on when you initially first clicked it's going to flatten it out to that level right there um, so experiment with making your own map if you want to uh, or your own tracks and if you go to ramp click on here experiment with things and I didn't do that one correctly reset so if you use the ramp tool left click and then drag and then let go and you know what that looks pretty good and then hit add ramp you can actually create a ramp system that's just that easy so we hit play I just created that ramp so now you're building a track and you want to start doing stuff like that. Now, there's also splines. Uh, I would suggest looking up spline um, for creating roads and stuff. Yep, lots to experiment with. I'm going to go ahead and save all, save selected, and then I'm going to call it quits on this video. If you guys got questions, you know where to find me. Hit me on that Discord and don't forget that tip jar. Alright, thanks for watching. We'll see you around.